Hey guys, welcome back to another video. And today we're going to be solving the leak out question first missing positive. All right, so in this question, we're given an unsorted integer array and we want to find the smallest missing positive integer. So uh, one more thing you want to notice is that we only want the positive integers. So in other words, it only starts anything from one all the way to uh, positive infinity. Okay, so in this case, we're just gonna ignore the number two. So we have one, two, and zero, but we really, we really don't care about the numbers which are equal to or less than zero. So in this case, we have the number one and we have the number two. And technically, we actually do not have any missing positive integer. So in that case, what's gonna happen is we're, go we're just gonna give output the next uh, positive integer. So in this case, the next positive integer is going to be the number three, right? Since we already have one and two, there's nothing in between of that. So the next possible value is three. Okay, similarly, let's look over here. So we have three, four, negative one, and one. And we're always gonna ignore numbers zero, uh, which are zero or less than zero. So we're ignoring one. And so you can just think of it as we have the numbers one, three, and four. So now in this case, what's gonna happen is that we have one, but we do not have the number two. So we're gonna end up outputting the number two. So hopefully the question does make sense now. So in order to uh, solve this question, we wanna understand one thing, which is the fact that our answer cannot be smaller than the number one. So our least possible answer is always going to be the number one because uh, there is no smaller positive integer than the number one. So let's just write that over here. So our answer is gonna be one or anything up to positive infinity, but there's actually a limit to that as well. So we have two conditions over here. Our first condition is, do we actually have any missing values? For example, over here, we do not have any missing numbers. So in that case, we just output it as the next number, which is the number three. So let's just uh, take a quick look at that. So let's say we have one, two, three, four, five, six. Now in this case, obviously we do not have any uh, missing numbers. And the number that we're going to output is going to be the next number, which is the number seven. So this over here is going to be one of our extreme cases. And the other case that we have is that we do have a missing number. So let's first deal with this case over here. So this answer is always going to be the length of our numbers, so in this case, how many values do we have? So we have one, two, three, four, five, six. It's gonna be the length of our numbers plus one. And that is going to be the maximum or the highest possible answer that we can have. So that is going to be our upper bound for our answer. So length of nums plus one. So that's kind of like the upper bound of our answers. Nothing is going to be greater than this value. And well, by the way, this value is inclusive. Okay. now every other value is going to fall in between of one and the length of nums plus one. The reason for that is because let's say we have something with a length of three and in order for it to not have any missing numbers, it has to have the numbers one, two, and three. And let's say it does not have the numbers one, two, three, and it has the numbers 10, uh, 100, and 20. Then in that case, our answer is always going to lie in between of the number one and the length of nums plus one. Our answer is never going to go outside of that boundary. Okay, so hopefully you understand how that works. And keeping that in mind, we can actually come up with our solution. So this over here is not gonna be our final solution, but let's just take a quick look at it. So uh, keeping what we just did in mind, so our answer is gonna be in the range of one, or it could be the length of nums plus one. Now in this case, the length of nums plus one is not going to be inclusive of length of nums plus one, right? So in order to make it inclusive of that value, we're gonna be plus two over here. Okay, so now that we're over here, we're gonna check if this x value is inside of our nums. And to be more specific, if it's not inside of our nums, then if it's not inside of our nums, then we're just gonna directly return that value. For example, if we do not have the number one, that means that we're missing the smallest possible value, and we're just gonna return that as our answer. Similarly, in this case over here, we have the number one, right? But we do not have the number two. So we're, we're just going to end up uh, returning that value. So this over here is going to be our answer. And if you submit this, it should work. So submit. So as you can see, our submission was accepted, but the problem with this solution, even though it does work and it is probably pretty fast as well, uh, it does not uh, follow this over here, which is that we want our algorithm to run in linear time and we want it to use constant extra space. So let's see how we can actually apply these rules into our algorithm over here. All right, so let's just start off by going through the step-by-step -step and let's just look at our array over here, which is the numbers three, four, negative one, one, and nine. So first let's kind of understand what are our possible answers. So our answer can either be one 
or it could go all the way up to the length of our array. So one, two, three, four, five. So five and plus one. So our answer could be one through six inclusive of both the numbers. And the answer, the reason we added plus one is because let's say everything was perfect. So if you had the numbers one, two, three, four, five, then in that case, our answer would be six. Okay, so now what we wanna do is we kind of want to clean up our array over here. And the way that we're gonna do that is if anything is less than or equal to our value of zero, or if anything is greater than the length of our number, then in that case, we're gonna to go to that specific element and we're gonna change its value. So now the question is, what are we gonna change its value to? So in our case, we're just gonna change its value to one more than the length of our array. And the reason that we're doing that should be clear really soon. So let's just go through our array. So over here we have three and three is in between of our range. So we can just skip that. Then we have four, that's fine. But the negative one is going to end up becoming the value six. So that becomes six over there. One is gonna stay the same. And nine is also greater than this. So it's also going to become six. So this over here was kind of our first step. So now that our array is cleaned up, what we wanna do is we're gonna kind of change the way that we look at our list. So over here, we're gonna think of each of the index, uh, index representative of a certain number. So for example, the zeroth index would mean the first number. This would mean the number two, three, four, and five. And we can use that in order to kind of tell us which numbers have already we've already come across. So uh, how we're gonna do this is we wanna use some sort of marker which tells us that we've used this number. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna be iterating through each of our numbers here. So currently, let's, let me just copy this over here. So we have our array over here and we're gonna be iterating through each of these numbers. So currently we're at the number three. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the index of three minus one. So that's the second index. So over here, we're at the second index of so zero, one, and two. And at the second index, what we're gonna do is we're gonna make this into a negative value. So by making this value negative, we're kind of telling our program that the number three, we've already come across the number three, so we don't need to worry about it again. So let's just go through this one more time. So now we have the number four. So now we're gonna go to four minus one, so the third index, so zero, one, two, and three, and we're gonna make this number negative. So all we're doing is we're kind of using a marker to tell us that this certain number at this index is being used. Now we're gonna go to the number six. And one more thing, so this actually became negative six. So we're gonna be taking its absolute value. So in this case, we're just gonna take the number six. So six minus one is five, and that leads us over here. So this over here becomes negative. Similarly, over here, we have the number one. So we wanna tell our program that, look, we already have the number one, so we don't need to account for that. So in order to do that, we're gonna to go to the first index, Remember, we're taking the absolute value, so one minus one, sorry, it's zero with index, not the first index, and we're gonna make this value negative. Okay, and over here, we notice one more thing. So at negative six, right, so that's its absolute value is the number six. Six minus five, one gives us an index of five, but this over here is already negative. So if something is already negative, that means that we've already come across the number once. So in this case, we're kind of dealing with our repetitions. So in this case, we already came across with the number, so we're just gonna let it be as it is. So what this is basically telling us is now we're gonna go through our array, and over here we have the number negative three. So this over here is less than zero. So that means we have a marker there. And that's telling us that, so basically at the zeroth index, that represents the number zero plus one since the index plus one. So this represents the number one. And since it's negative, it means that the number one we've already come across. But this over here is positive. So when it's positive, it's basically telling us that we've not come across this number yet. So this is index one plus one. So that gives us a number of two. And as you can see, we did not come across the number two. Similarly over here, we came across the number three, as you can see here, and we also came across the number four. Now the part that is might be a little bit confusing is why is this over here negative, right? We did not come across the number five, yet this value is negative. And the reason for that is because let's say everything over here was negative, then in that case, we wouldn't actually be returning anything. So when everything is negative, we're just gonna return the length of our numbers plus one. So when everything is negative, that's basically telling our program that we came across each of the numbers starting from one 
up through the up through the length of nums. So now we're just going to end up returning length of nums plus one. So let's just go back to this question over here. And this over here has a value of four, which is positive. So we came across the first positive value and we're going to directly return that. So currently we're at the index of one. So we're going to do one plus one, which equals to two and two is the number which we want to return. So we're going to end up returning two. And just for the sake of an example, so one comma two comma three, then in this case, uh, we're actually going to output the number four. So when you go through this, uh, uh, this is going to become negative. This is also going to become negative, And so is this. So now we have all three negative values. And when we have all negative values, like I said earlier, that means that we've accounted for all of the numbers. And the next number that the number that we're going to output is going to be the length of nums plus one. So in this case, it's just going to be the number three, since that's the length plus one. And we're going to output the number four over here. So hopefully this does make sense. And now I'll just go through how we can write the code, which should be the easy part once you actually understand how this works. So this over here is going to refer to our first pass where we're just cleaning up our array. So cleaning up, let's just do that. Okay, so, so over here, we're gonna go inside of a for loop. So for the index in the range of our length of nums. Okay, and over here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna check if that current number, so nums index, if this number is greater than, sorry, less than or equal to the number zero, or if this number nums index is greater than the length of our sorry, length of our nums, then in either of those cases, we're going to change its value. So we're going to go to nums index, and now we're going to give it the value of the length of our nums plus one. So that over here is the ending of our first step. So now we have our second step, which is we're kind of placing our marker. So we're adding, we're going to make the values negative in order to kind of say that over here we have a value. So to do this, we can just do for num and nums. So now we have each of our numbers and we want to change this into an, its absolute value because it could be negative. So our number is going to be the absolute value of our number. So if this number over here is less than or equal to the length of nums, then in that case, we're going to go and make it negative. So we're going to go, we're going to, go to nums and then we're going to go to its index. So nums minus one, we're going to go to that index we're going to make that value negative. So into equal to negative one. So we're multiplying that by negative one. But over here, the problem is what if we come across the number two times? Then when we come across the number two times, it will first become negative. And since we're multiplying a negative number with negative one, it will become positive. So in order to kind of make sure that doesn't happen, we're going to go to nums num minus one in order to check if this value is a greater than or equal to zero. So if it is greater than or equal to zero, that means it's positive. And in that case, only and then only then are we going to go inside over here and make that number negative. Okay, and that's going to be it for placing our marker. And this over here is going to be our final step for getting the answer. Okay. And over here, all that we're going to do is we're going to iterate through each of our numbers. So let's just do for index in range length of nums. And over here, we're going to check if the current number we're on, so nums index, if this number over here is greater than zero, then in that case, we're going to return the index we're on plus one, since that's what uh, the index is representing. So index zero represents the number zero plus one, which is one. Okay, and that's going to be it. But what if we don't end up returning anything over here? That means that all of our values are negative. Then in that case, we're just going to return the length of nums plus one. And one more thing, the reason uh, I, I kept calling the length of nums instead of a variable which ha holds that value is because we want to do this in constant space. And that should be it. So let's submit this. So sorry, uh, this over here is not nums. It's supposed to be num. So we're referring to the variable over here, not nums the list. Sorry. Okay. So submit. And as you can see, our submission was accepted. So finally, hopefully this did make some sense. I'm sorry if it was a little bit all over the place, but thanks a lot for watching guys. Do let me know if you have any questions and don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you.